Hi, my name is Greg Alton. In this video, I'm going to discuss an RFID tag design in Sonnet software. In this video, we'll discuss the motivation, take a look at how this example will be run in Sonnet, take a look at some additional resources, and come to some conclusions about the model. RFID is a growing market. More and more manufacturers, parcel handlers, brick and mortar stores, and other businesses are taking advantage of RFID technology for tracking and labeling goods and packages electronically. Electronic identification and having the ability to extract information about the package electronically in a single sweep provides a lot of improvement in the automated processes and reduces in the overall business costs. In general, Designers are pushing to higher and higher frequencies, and RFID is no exception to this. Although 13 megahertz is allocated globally for RFID, it's still a physically large wavelength, just over 23 meters in free space. At this wavelength, efficient radiation is not possible in a few square centimeters of space. And if you consider that the design resonates near 13 megahertz on a planar material, also realize that it will be coupling inductively instead of radiating effectively. So pushing higher frequencies such as 900 megahertz or even 2.4 gigahertz in some instances allows a designer to create an RFID tag that can actually radiate and be read at further distances. Distances maybe up to 10 meters or so between the tag and the reading device. Sonnet has a number of unique features that make it an excellent tool for modeling RFID tags. Sonnet is a full wave 3D planar EM simulator. It's based on the method of moment techniques and uses a robust and reliable FFT formulation which simplifies into sine and cosine arguments for calculating Green's functions. Using this method to solve for the currents directly, Sonnet is able to take and use some of its unique advantages and solving for RFID tags very efficiently. Sonnet can model many dielectric materials in the RFID stack up, including any bonding agents or multiple layers of paper in the tag or other thin dielectrics that may give other simulators more difficulty. Finally, Sonnet has also been known to be able to model very, very thin or extremely thin dielectrics with precision. Uh, we have had some cases where people have modeled substrates measuring just a few angstroms in thickness. In addition to the mathematics that make Sonnet a great tool for modeling RFID tags, Sonnet also has a number of features that really help the designer with their process as well. Adding in parameters, variables, or equations to a model can allow a designer some freedom in being able to model the device. They can also view current density. Viewing the current density could give the designer some insight as to where a resonance may be or where current may be crowding in an unexpected manner. Sonnet also has the set ability to view a nearby E field by using a sense metal. And sense metal is a metal type in Sonnet that allow a designer to view an E field as if it were current. Sonnet also has the ability to view and plot far field patterns so a designer can see in which direction they expect best radiation from the RFID tag that they're designing. So here's our example. It's been sourced from NXP from an application note published back in June of 2009. This is a good example of a tag, a compact tag, for 850 to 1100 megahertz and will be combined in the simulation with an NXP chip. So let's now jump to a demonstration of how we would analyze this example. Let's get started with our example. From the Sonnet taskbar, we will start a new geometry. This will open up the Sonnet project editor. In Sonnet, if you ever have a question on how to get something done, if you don't know what the next step is you need, I recommend looking at the quick start guide. From here, you can look at various steps needed to complete the process to run a sonnet simulation. In this case, we're going to import a circuit layout, as I described, provided by the NXP application note. File, import, DXF, and I'm going to grab our example from NXP, the DXF from there, 
and I'm going to use a project template. Now a project template in Sonnet is a way to have the environment set up before you work with the geometry. This will often speed up your design process by getting most of the environment set up before you get started. I have one already set up for this, the RFID template and I'm going to import it to a new project. I'm also going to name it something different so I don't overwrite my template. Okay, now that we have our import window up, the project geometry has been read, but we need to make a couple of changes to get this project in. By selecting layers, I'm going to uncheck the layer zero since there are features in there that I know we don't need. Now pressing OK and import. We end up with a SANA project file. These are some warnings we can ignore and closing that we now have the geometry we need. The first thing we need to do is now center our geometry in the problem space. So I'm going to use control A in my keyboard and you'll see that it's highlighted black now to highlight the geometry in the problem space. Then using modify center both I can bring the geometry we imported into the center of the sonnet environment. Now using the zoom tool I'm going to zoom up on our geometry to get a better view of it. Here we can see our dipole configuration and the geometry that makes it up. We now want to change the material properties of this. So I'm going to click on our geometry, right click, metal properties. The unknown metal is what came in with our import and we want to use copper for this particular design. Pressing OK, now you'll see that the hash pattern for the sonnet geometry with the metal copper has changed from the original unknown metal hash pattern to that of the green for copper. You also notice that we have an extra piece of geometry in here. Now this geometry needs to be removed from our project so we have to take a couple extra steps to do that in this particular instance. I'm going to again use control A hotkeys to highlight all of the geometry. This time I'm going to use edit merge polygons to group the geometry together. We now actually have two separate geometries and what in fact happened here this is a way in Sonnet to cut out a hole in a geometry. We actually had two metals layer on top of each other. This red hash having a different material property than the copper was able to now make a cutout in the geometry in the copper. Now that we have that cutout gone we now need to excite our antenna and to do that we need to slice this to put in a port. We're going to use edit divide polygons and put a slice right through the middle of our geometry. Now you can see we have hash in between or down the middle of this center fed part of the dipole. I'm going to use this icon here, add port from our sonnet toolbox and add the port right in the middle of the dipole on the bottom part. Thanks to our import and to our sonnet project template we now have a project that's ready to simulate. With that port in place, we're now ready to run this simulation. You can run a simulation in Sonnet by selecting Project, Analyze, or by pressing the EM button across the top of the toolbar. I'm going to press the EM button. It's going to ask us to save because we've made some changes. Save, and now our EM analysis is running. Now that our analysis is complete, we can view the results from our Sonnet EM analysis. Right from the analysis monitor, we can open up the response that was generated. 
Here we can see the response for S11, but it's not quite what we would have expected. One thing I didn't mention earlier is that the NXP chip had a different impedance than 50 ohms. Sonnet by default uses a 50 ohm impedance for the ports, but we can easily change that to view how this antenna looks for that non 50 ohm match. By right clicking I was able to open this menu and by selecting terminations I can open up our properties window so we can change the impedance of the port as it's displayed in the response viewer. The impedance of the chip we're trying to match to is actually 22 and minus 195 ohms. It is a complex impedance so now by pressing OK we can change what the graph is showing and what it's matched to. And now we can see that our graph shows a much better match and a much better response, much closer to what we expected for an antenna for this frequency range. Now that we've seen the response, we also want to take a look at the far field. This is an antenna after all. So going back to our analysis monitor, I can select far field from one of the options of results to display. By default, Sonnet will open up the Cartesian plot of the far field. I tend to like the polar plot. So you can change the graph type by going to graph type polar and now we can see the far field pattern as plotted on a polar plot. Sonnet will also allow you to change the cut plane and viewed angles for your far field pattern. So we have one last piece of information from the sonnet analysis that we should share. Going back now to our analysis monitor again, we can also view the current on the antenna as it's analyzed for various frequencies. Let's zoom up a little bit and choose a frequency closer to our center band. Here we can see very clearly the high spots which are red and the low spots which are a blue color. Sonnet will also allow us to animate the current over phase on this project. Animation settings will allow us to change whether or not we want to animate over frequency or over time. In this case I want to select time to see it over phase. Hit OK. Animation, animate view will now give me the animation controls where I can select to play the animation. Here we can see how the current changes over phase. Again, highlighting the high spots and low spots. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about using Sonnet for RFID antenna designs, we have a few more resources available to you. On our website, sonnetsoftware.com slash resources, we do have an RFID antenna design application note. In addition to that, we have a number of examples built into the Sonnet software light and professional tools. In the example browser, you can search just simply for the tag RFID. And finally, we also have a book, Introduction to Antenna Analysis Using EM Simulators, which uses Sonnet extensively and has a chapter dedicated to RFID tag analysis. So with this talk, I hope that you've learned that Sonnet is indeed an effective and efficient EM simulation tool for RFID antennas. And the use of some of the features in Sonnet, such as parameters and sense metal, can offer further insight to a designer, giving them more information about their design to enhance it or even correct it based on the environment. And last, Sonnet will give the designer the power to prototype many designs quickly, giving way to an efficient iterative design process. Thank you for watching this video and your kind attention.